New Visions Abroad, or Any Visions Abroad, um, is a program in which uh, we wait for an invitation to be invited to a community. We were invited to visit Nepal and to explore potential partnerships. Our team that just returned was a team that we had crafted because of the collective experience of each of the team members in doing work like this. So as a developing nation, one of the big challenges that Nepal is facing is around educational attainment and actually mobilizing their young people to not only attend school, but to thrive in school, um, and then to remain in Nepal as adults. They're still uh, in a recovery phase from the 2015 earthquakes and in dire need of, of school facilities, maybe a healthcare facility, and toward that end we can develop a project around it. We're hoping right now that the project we land on is in actually developing a teacher training center, um, which would be the first of its kind in Nepal, uh, and it would really be the hub that training for education but also healthcare workers uh, or community development specialists can occur. This is a framing trip. Uh, there will be many more opportunities as we move down the road to become more refined in what we're doing, um, but this is about exposure and this is about uh, developing friendships ultimately that will enable this project to occur. What we're aiming to do is to create a relationship that is going to allow us to better understand the community in which we're serving and allow our students to really receive the kind of education that is experiential in nature. That's what Norwich University was founded on in the first place. They have a real need for professional development for their teachers uh, so that they have different ways of educating that will be more engaging for the students there. They, from what I understand, have a continuous need for professional development for their health workers and their medical personnel. So, uh, I see this being a wonderful opportunity, as other sites have been in the past, for us really engaging multiple disciplines across our campus. So it's very exciting. It's exciting to be a part of a, of a small team that's going in to really investigate and develop those relationships that are so important in making experiences like this work. <laughs> So it is uh, about 7.45 in the evening, Thursday, January 5th. We are in Botanamlang. It's day three of our adventure here in Nepal. Paul, what, what did we start out with? <laughs> oh, let's see. <clears throat> we started out with delicious breakfast at the place that we stayed last night. We saw a lot today. I'm trying to remember the first stop. Was the hospital the yeah. first stop? Yes. Before that even, the entrance to Pochpakari. Right. Oh, yes. We were greeted as we were as we came through by the most wonderful people, and um, signing the the registration for coming into the district. Can you talk a little bit about the hospital? Really amazing, um, the work that they've done. The emergency room, a five bed ward, a surgery uh, for minor procedures. They have a laboratory where they are doing some basic uh, blood work. They have a room set up for a birthing center, but it's not 
quite developed yet. Um, and, oh, they have an x-ray, um, they have an EKG room, but they don't have an EKG machine yet, but they have a space where they plan to do EKGs. So it was really um, very well organized. Uh, they have one medical doctor, three nurses, and a phlebotomist, and someone who worked in a lab. Um, so there's, I think in total, there were about nine people that worked there. So, what is your name? My name is Munas Rasta. And where are you from? I'm from Botanama. Uh, I came uh, from two years ago here. Mm. And uh, here, uh, first time we started with COVID, COVID this. But now I'm uh, uh, working in also lab, lab just like AFB. We can uh, see there from AFB test and uh, urine test, stool test like that. We can uh, learn more from uh, medical uh, medical team. Uh, I used to see CID. Okay. And there is uh, one man who work in lab. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Salunke. So I'm inspired from him. Uh, I want to learn more about laboratory, so I'm trying to go out. But uh, not, I'm not able to go for right now. So I'm uh, here for now, but I will try to learn more to, more from abroad, and I, I will come again in here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. They really identified some of their challenges. Um, for one thing, the place where the, the location of the hospital is in a landslide area, so in a, in a flooding area. So they, they are constantly trying to figure out how to protect what they've done. I guess what, what really opened my eyes to how tough it was, but how tough the buildings are, was seeing that building this morning in Malamchi that has two stories below grade from the, from the flood, two stories above grade. And yeah, just seeing that the, the hotel that we stayed in, there was water on the fifth floor. I can certainly speak to the school. I, I was blown away um, by the school, the, the absolute like raw beauty of the landscape and um, the study beauty of the school. I mean, brand new infrastructure and, and very modern, with, with very modern goals. Um, but, you know, I do wonder as they were talking about their goals and, and where they're currently at, if they are overextended themselves, you know, uh, as they talk about the future, they're getting all new smart boards but then it's a matter of training all of their staff to you teach with technology. Um, it's, it's a different, um, a completely different practice. Um, so I really wonder what that timeline is going to look like for them um, and if that's going to lead to better outcomes. Um, and in terms of resource use, that, that's, a, that's a lot of money to put into that one thing. Um, and one thing they mentioned was having to fundraise each month to actually pay um, their teacher salaries right now. So um, also the question of maintenance, long-term maintenance on a facility of that size. Um, oh, yeah. So a huge investment for the community right now, absolutely stunning. And I wonder, I'd be curious to see it five and 10 years down the road, um, what that model of education looks like. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You, you build schools as a, you know, what yeah. do you see when you look at that? I've been directly and indirectly part of uh, that school right from the conceptual days. Many years ago, I attempted to do the same in, in, in the other side, Hilabu. Um, that was before the earthquake. Um, really because we thought that spreading out resources, there were two schools where they didn't have enough teachers when they were running separately and then there was a building issue so we were helping with the infrastructure as well as teacher. So we thought if we could bring these schools together and then um, they will not only bring the teacher, the students together but also teachers and the resources will be shared and it will become much more cost effective for running the school. But this is at a very different level. Um, I think they have bought into a big school concept 
So for a big school, there must be over a thousand students, and in a hilly, like mountains region like this, it is very difficult to have thousand students at a time. We must find a way to support that school one one another way. We want to make the school a role model in the whole nation. You know, we don't want to just pretend like we have something to offer. I'm constantly thinking and uh, have been thinking uh, of uh, what could be a real need, and I'm also carefully listening to them, listening to them what actually they ask for. The headmaster also said that they're frustrated by so many different people and organizations coming and thinking they can help, but they just come for one and one time and they disappear. And uh, they say that they trust us uh, because they've seen us working in this region for a very long period of time. Uh, yeah, yeah, we finally, um, I was able to return to Botanamon today, uh, where I was last, uh, I last visited in 2019. Um, and we, yeah, we, we came here initially in 2019 to establish a sister school partnership uh, with a high school in uh, Northfield, Vermont. And, and COVID happened and waylaid all of our plans. And yeah, it was just really humbling to, to re-enter the community and see the same people and begin to start that conversation again. Um, I, was, I was very, very impressed by the warm reception we received. And, um, no, it's just, it's just great. And that's where we are now is in Botanamlong. And, um, we have another day here uh, tomorrow, and I'm just really excited to start talking with students and teachers. So, yeah, here we are. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so for me, it's a learning opportunity. Just when, how, what people say and respond, and how they, uh, what they think about it, just gives new perspective. So does the distance the student has to travel have an impact on their learning? Yeah, of course. Yes. It makes, like, um, like, the students who come like 15 minutes, who walk 15 minutes, um, they struggle a lot in learning things because they have to carry heavy bags yeah. and then they have short of time to do homework and to remember things, yeah. you know. What do you think the solution or the compromise to... I to think a school bus. You think a school bus? Yeah, I think school bus. Which is why you have one school bus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, are, what are some of your challenges in school? Yeah. Uh, I guess teachers, finding them, yeah. so you're finding them, uh, well-qualified teachers, you know, well before this, we had four schools in this area, and we combined, we mixed together, we come up together and make this big school. So there's a different kind of teachers, and there's a different kind of students. And right now we have, this is the main challenge that I teach, and my there, there's a different style of mine. And there's another teacher, she has, or he has his own different style. So when I come to the other students, they are um, like struggling to catching my style, you know, and I am struggling to catching their styles. So this is the right now main yeah. challenge here. Do, is behavioral management a problem here amongst the children? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. There's, there's sometimes mm -hmm. in students' behavior, but yeah, yeah sometimes. What about the student? students' behavior is uh, always a challenge for yes. the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> always a challenge. Yeah. So the small kids yeah. in the playgroup, they stay there and then they come to this class, uh -huh. kindergarten, and then they go to the one. Okay. Yeah. And where does primary end? What level? Five. Five. In, yeah. And then it begins six yeah, through? Six to twelve. Twelve. Outside, yeah. Okay. And is it... So it's not really a British... Um, no or yes, yes. Yeah. kind of, kind of, yeah. Because with with British, it's it's like we call them standards yeah. and levels. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and at what what grade level do they test? Like, are all the students testing today? Yes, or all of them. Okay. And is it a national examination or is it? Yes, 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 yes. National. Yes. Okay. Do you have issues with attendance or generally is it good? No, generally it's good. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that the students prefer it as yes. one big school? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, so okay. that's computer. That's computer. Yeah. Do they get tested on computer literacy? Yes. yes. So we have a lot of Nepali students at yeah. Norwich University yeah. at our school. And we're always so impressed with their um, just the, 
how seriously they take yeah. their education. Yeah. They're always high, are some of our highest performing students. Yeah. yeah. One way of helping in educative sector would be like providing trainings, emphasizing on quality, helping them to understand um, educational material, how to address children, how to understand children, and helping them understand the educational material would be really important. So I believe trainings um, about how to teach and explore within the children would be one really important aspect if we go there and do something on educational sector. But we learned that there is absolutely a future in Nepal for New Visions Abroad. We have a number of students from Nepal at Norwich who are very eager and excited. And the folks that we met in Nepal are very ready, very much ready to partner with us and invite us again. The next time we go, we are going to be bringing students, certainly in partnership with Sam Hagen, Go Global, and I'm generally very excited. We are about to launch into kind of the next phase of New Visions Broad, and we're taking all of the experiences and lessons that we've learned from previous trips, previous partnerships, and really being able to now kind of hone them and focus them in on this new, this new experience, this new partnership. So we're really excited. <laughs>